I built that course because I opened my business without spending too much money, probably maybe a few hundred dollars. And most of that was due to the boring stuff, the yeah. LLC and the um, licensing my business in the state. So those things I had to pay for, I couldn't really get away with that. But everything else, I was lucky enough that my old supervisor, he gifted me an office for about three months when I didn't have to pay for that. Um, I used a lot of like free trials and just found ways to do a lot of things myself. So I didn't really have a need to do a lot of grants or loans or anything like that. Welcome everybody back to another exciting show of the About That Water podcast. Before we get started, I gotta talk about my sponsors because I like to get paid. We are gonna be talking about uh, Earth Breeze. So these are laundry sheets. If you're tired of actually having all that liquid and poured it inside your washing machine, you can go out on and use those. They just one tear sheet, putting a load of laundry, nice, easy, ready to go. If you wanna get yours today, go to aboutthatwallet.com forward slash Earth Breeze. Today, we have a wonderful guest. For those of you who have been following the show, you already know who she is. But for those of you who are new, you are being introduced to Dr. Green, who is a truly a unique and inspiring psychologist who believes that incorporating fun and creativity into therapy can make a big difference in her clients' lives. Her education and experience combined with her creative approach makes her the perfect ally for those looking to overcome personal challenges and find their groove. Don't hesitate to reach out to Dr. Green. She's the psychologist who can help you dance to the rhythm of life. How you doing today, Dr. Green? I'm great. Thanks for having me back again. Awesome. Yeah, I always enjoy our conversations because we normally talk about psychology, um, not the psychology, but the psychological aspects of life. Um, how do we formulate our habits? What are our habits in our lifestyles, our life choices, and how to get around the scarcity mindset to the abundance mindset yes uh, that was a fun episode by the way <laughs> right so what have you been up to lately um i have just been trying to expand my private practice um that you know with any business it has its ebbs and flows so just trying to stay afloat there um at the same time i've kind of ventured into a new business arena Mm -hmm. And I launched a course actually to teach other mental health professionals how to open up their own private practices. So I've been working really hard on that. I actually just launched that maybe like three weeks ago at this point. So it's pretty new. So I'm just waiting for that to kind of take off. Hopefully. Yes. It will take off. We got this. We got this. <laughs> um, so we had to talk about businesses because, you know, you're already starting, you're already starting a whole new venture with this whole brand, but you're not leaving your current brand. Right. So can you walk us through how did you start your first business? Yeah, um, actually, I can't even take all the credit for that. I had some really good mentors, I would say at that point in time. Um, a, a couple of my old supervisors from like internships and practicums, they are the ones who really encouraged me to open up my own private practice. And I have to say I was really scared and I didn't think that I knew what I was doing. I didn't know anybody else that really had a business I mean, other than you, but like, you know, we're different yeah, fields. Right. Um, you know, my family had never owned a business. It wasn't anything like that. So I was really nervous, but when I looked at other psychology jobs, I was not feeling that salary <laughs> and I just didn't want to do it. And I knew the only way for me to make the most income with all my schooling and education without uh, someone taking a cut, whether that would be insurance companies or owners of private practices themselves, if I like joined a group practice, was for me to open up my own. And thanks to like their advice, my mentor's advice, I did it. Okay, so what was the first step that you did um, to start your practice? Was it 
like becoming a mentor or was it like creating your LLC first or coming up with a cool name? What was that like? Actually, the first thing I did was read the book that you gave me, <laughs> Business Boutique. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I read that entire book before I did anything. Um, and then from there, I kind of follow the steps that they suggested. I'm trying to find it. Yes, I am trying to find it. <laughs> but go ahead, on, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so that book was really helpful in just like the brainstorming process to just figure out like what my business plan would look like, including the name, but also figuring out like, who my audience would be, who I wanted to serve, what my reason or my why was, what my purpose was, what I wanted to get out of it. Um, so I started with that. And then actually I networked with a couple other people who were either just like starting the process themselves or was interested in doing it in the future. And they had a, a lot of like really good resources and we all helped each other. They sent them to me and that was helpful in learning how to start it. And then, like, I think once I got the groundwork done, it was just the more boring stuff, like filing the LLC, uh, opening up the business bank account, figuring out if I wanted to do. Well, at that point in time, I actually had a brick and mortar an actual office. Mm -hmm. um, so figuring out where that would be. Um, I don't know, more boring stuff. But the beginning was really fun, actually. Like the brainstorming part, the figuring out my business plan, the figuring out the who's and the why's. That's the part I actually really, really enjoyed. Awesome. Um, so now that you call it the boring part, but we all have to do the boring part to get paid, you know, by the yeah. state and everything like that. Taxes. Yeah. Tax. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um how did you come up with the name for your business so i feel like everything from back then so i opened my practice in october of 2020 mm. and i've grown so much since then but at the time my whole vision was to expand into sort of like a wellness center and i haven't completely let it go but at that time, I really wanted to open up like a wellness center and kind of involve other forms of holistic wellness. So massages and nutritionists, um, a psyche, a psychiatric medication part of it. Um, so I wanted to kind of include everything. And so to me, that's like a part of a community, which I could kind of see like in a garden, like you have different flowers, different plants. And I wanted the whole thing to be really peaceful. And that's what I think of when I think of walking through a garden. It's really serene, really calm. In my vision of my building or my wellness center, I wanted to have a lot of plants and waterfalls and it was a whole thing. Um, so that's how the Green Garden came up. And plus, it's a playoff of my last name as well. Yes. Dr. Green, Green Garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's a playoff of that. Um, things are a little bit different now. I'm not so sure I want to take that route, but you know, we'll see. I don't know what comes in the future. Hey, I mean, we are coming up on your third year, right? Yeah. In October. Nice. What are you going to do to celebrate? I think I do like little celebrations on my fifth, fifth year. I want to do a big celebration. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Cause we started around the same time. So yeah. Party. Oh, that would be so much fun. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Business fun. Um, so you got the name, you got the uh, LLC, you got the EIN, you got your bank account. Um, did you split up your bank account to multiple accounts or just one? For the business part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I opened up a business checking and a business savings. Um, and with the intention of the savings being a place where I put aside money for taxes, money aside for any business like investments that I needed to do, whether that was like at the time I need to buy a new computer. So buying a new computer, um, any office supplies, CEUs, trainings, just anything like that that I need for the business. And then the checking was for any income that I was going to be making. Awesome. And what do you do now as far as um, finding other, I guess you could say like grants or loans or how did you get started financially? 
I actually didn't spend too much money and it's kind of cool slash crazy that you're bringing this back up because that's what my whole second business venture is about. My course is about opening up a business, but it's about doing it without investing a lot of money. Mm. So I built that course because I opened my business without spending too much money, probably maybe a few hundred dollars. And most of that was due to the boring stuff, the yeah. LLC and the um, licensing my business in the state. So those things I had to pay for, I couldn't really get away with that. But everything else, I was lucky enough that my old supervisor, he gifted me an office for about three months when I didn't have to pay for that. Um, I used a lot of like free trials and just found ways to do a lot of things myself. So I didn't really have a need to do a lot of grants or loans or anything like that. Oh, that is awesome. I love those free trials too. They give you like what, 30 days? <laughs> we got like three months. Three months, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to ask it. What, what's one of them that you use for three months? Um, I believe it was like three months, like simple. Well, these are therapy trials, but oh, like okay. for simple practice, just for like EHR. Um, and then there's just like different directories that were for free anyway. So then you didn't have to pay. Um, but a lot of the stuff you could try out because they knew we were like, starting clinicians and we wanted to figure out what was the best program for us so they let us try them out that is awesome so keeping in mind with your community was the one that actually you know allowed you to find some of these cool like activities i guess you could say um ways to actually do things free or did you find these out on your own um it was a mix of both you know talking to other people figuring out like what they're doing I was networking really early in the game when, especially when I didn't have any clients and nothing else to do other than network. So, um, I did a lot of research and did a lot of networking and just asked a lot of questions. Okay. Um, so now that we got the questions out the way, we started looking into obviously the back to the boring stuff. Uh, <laughs> did you find a tax accountant or were you keep like, how were you keeping your books in order? So I think because I am so small and it's just me, I do it myself, um, just using like an Excel sheet and just making sure I stayed on top of it. I think if I was to ever expand, I would invest in something better. I don't know if it's called better because my worksheet is fine. Right. Um, but, you know, just something with more like capabilities. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then... Um, but I did make sure to hire somebody when it came down to tax time because I, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I didn't want to mess anything up. So that was the point where I did spend some money. But luckily, at that point, it had been a whole nother year and I had clients and I had money saved in the savings. So I had enough money to pay them and it, it worked out. Awesome. So now that you got all of that fun things, um, did you do like business credit cards at all? Or are you just still doing like as cash in, cash out? Yeah, no credit cards. I know we've talked about that before and I've thought about it, but I still haven't made the move. Yeah, we can talk offline about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now that you uh, have all these things in order, how was it when you first got your, when you, not first got your, when you first um, start pitching your business and say, hey, I'm here, uh, I'm open for business, what was your advertising look like? Um, like I said, we used a lot of the directories. So the therapists have like their own directories where they can put up like a description about themselves and who they want to work with, what insurance companies they are paneled with, their rates, all that stuff. Um, so I use a lot of the directories. Uh, networking was really big too, just word of mouth, just getting your name out there, having people know who you are. Um, my, I actually got my first client through a workshop that I held. Um, they came to my workshop and then signed up to be my client. Like, that next week or something. So that actually worked out really well. So, you know, there's things specifically for therapists to help them advertise. But I think 
what's helpful also is to kind of think outside the box and just do things however you do them, whatever speaks to your client. It's really about just like finding your target audience and reaching them however that looks. Does social media work out for you or still work? No. Oh, no. I hate social media. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hate social media? It's a waste of time. But in reality, like, no one is going on Instagram looking for therapists. You might, like, look at a therapeutic post, see some encouraging words, and, like, that's cool. You like it, feel good for the day. But nobody's on there looking for therapists. So that never got me any clients. It really was the directories that got me the majority of my, my clients. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're coming on this show so we can broadcast you across the world and yes. across the globe. Um, because you say you were mentioning that you were a brick and mortar, what made that change to go virtual? Well, I started during COVID and I wasn't allowing people to come into my office anyway. So it just the finances of it all, you know, I was eventually I had to start paying rent. And I still wasn't bringing in the amount of clients that I needed at that point. And so I didn't see the point of keeping it. Um, and luckily for me, like I work with young adults for the most part. So they don't mind being virtual. Like my, it works for my client caseload. Um, so yeah, I just quit that and I've been virtual ever since. Nice. So let's go on and slide on over to this new venture that you're talking about here. So, you know, were you repeating the same steps that you did when you started this business? Um, it was a little bit of that. I mean, it was that, but it was a lot of just feedback too that I've heard from other people with with like things they wish that they have known they they had known in the beginning when starting their business. A lot of it was me too, um, stuff that I had to figure out, stuff that I had to ask a lot of people to like understand what this even meant um give us give us one example what are you talking about um like i know some people didn't even know to open a bank a business bank account i know a lot of people who kept all their money in one account oh so knowing that you should do that from the beginning is helpful so that you're not stuck you know separating everything at the end of the day and trying to figure out what's business and what's personal um, so it's like simple things like that, that if somebody would have just said that to us in the beginning, it would have cut out all that trauma, or trouble. Um, but like, you know, when we go to school, nobody teaches us how to open a business. The assumption is that we are going to just work for somebody else. And so for us, the clinicians or therapists, a lot of opening our business was just figuring out how to do it in general, and then what works for us. Because even if you open a business, there's a lot of my friends who also took like courses and programs and stuff too. They invested a lot of money in those programs, but everything that they said didn't always work for them. It wasn't a good fit sometimes. Okay, so this is a particular niche that you have uh, pretty much cornerstone almost because not too many people have it and what's out there doesn't work. Oh, there's a lot of programs out there, but I think what makes my program different is that I'm not looking to charge people thousands of dollars to start their, their businesses. I'm trying to launch my course from the understanding that these people are also just starting out and it just would have been nice to have some guidance and instruction. So I'm, I charge like a reasonable rate to get people to like, you know, the point where I'm at, like, I'm really happy. I'm really comfortable. And I just want people to experience that. Awesome. Well, I might be signing up for the course too. So <laughs> I can experience all the Walk out. things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what does it take far as a, cause you know, this is a habit show and trying to keep people excited and constantly going. Um, what is it? What type of habits or what type of strategy should somebody have uh, to keep it going? You know, not give up. I think it's really just working on your mindset 
like every day because it's really easy to give up and it's really easy to feel like disappointed or let down that like you're not getting the results that you want. And for me, that was the hardest part too, was, you know, figuring out like if I still wanted to do this, if the rates I'm charging are reflective of how much I value myself and my services. And to me, that was the hardest part. Um, And that's more of just like an active habit. You have to tell yourself, you have to keep talking to yourself, keep telling yourself like, this is worth it. This is what you want to do. Remembering your reasons for starting it, remembering what it would look like if you weren't doing this. Mm. That helped me a lot too. Um, I work part-time hours and I have a really flexible schedule and I make my own schedule and it's really nice. And there's a lot of people that don't have that luxury. So I think about what it would look like if I didn't have my own business and if I worked for somebody else and that kept me going as well. And then besides like your mindset. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine like working eight hours a day anymore. Like, I don't know. That makes me sad, but I could. I mean, I could, Yeah. but that's not why I opened my business. Like I just, I don't want to do that. Um, But I think working on your business every day too is also another habit that I got used to doing as well. Like even when I didn't have clients, I still went into my office and I still did research and I networked and I had meetings and I physically got out of my house to go to this office, even though I was meeting with not a single person, but I made sure to work on something every single day. And even now when I'm more busy, just putting an hour towards the work is really helpful. Hmm. Okay. I like that because, um, you know, even when I don't have interviews and I was waiting around for you, I was like, hmm, what can I post today? What can I, yeah. what kind of strategies that I need to do to help advertise the business a little bit more? How can I strategize this particular show? Like, how can I get better um, at the things that I'm doing right now to improve the experience for the listeners? Like, what can I do to do that? Um, and so if you are listening right now, you thinking about starting a business, I really think that uh, you have to look at it from the customer service side of the house, more so that you just love it. So. <laughs> I think that's exactly what I was doing too. When I first started was just like figuring out marketing and like I said, networking, but also trying to just get the business out there and trying to get people to find out, you know, who I was and what my business was about. And that's when I was writing a lot of blogs and I was on social media a lot more consistent i mean i was on tv at some point yeah yeah. (laughs) how was that by the way like i was so crazy i was like hey i know her like oh boy (laughs) Um, that was interesting yeah this these last couple years have been very interesting went on tv that was actually for another job that i had but i talked about you know assessment psychological assessment that was pretty cool and I think in January, I was featured in a magazine. I don't know if I told you that. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. So that happened too. So I mean, like there's a lot of publicity that's been happening, but I don't, I don't know. I have to figure out ways to kind of like put it on my page and put that out there. Right now it's just kind of spread out all over the place and people don't really know unless I tell you. Okay. Well, hopefully you can put this interview on your page. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now that you got your, um, so we're just going to slide on down to the third segment of the show, which is the features. So we're just going to learn about um, like your skills and habits that you think that you need to take you to the next level. The next level? Yeah. Where you, like... where you at? Now? <laughs> What's going to take you to that next level? Like what skills or things that's going to take you to the next one? I think implementing the same ones that I'm doing, continuing that. I think just being consistent really is what's going to get me to the next level. 
like we said earlier, like it's really easy to become lazy and get tired or feel like I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so I think it's just being consistent, really. Like there's no magic that happens. It's just a lot more of the same stuff more often, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I might, I might need that because consistency is one thing that I don't have. And I need to be consistent on like advertising things, but I'm trying to take my, I'm trying to take your class for free right now. So you know, <laughs> some of this information. <laughs> I right. know one thing that I have started doing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess this is sort of in the same realm, but to to your point, it's good to put yourself on a schedule mm. and that helps with consistency too. So you, if you know that at the same day, at the same time, you are expected to do this because that's what you've committed to, that's going to help you with your consistency. So I have on my calendar, like on the first of each month, I'm going to update my directories and I'm going to do this every month to keep me on the front page mm. of those algorithms because I need to be consistent and I need people to know who I am. So I think that's a good tool for being consistent is just making that appointment with yourself. I like that. So in other words, you're limiting your time, but also maximizing your exposure at the same time. Yes. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Is there anything else before we start diving into the final four questions? I don't think so. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> Let's knock it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so question number one, what does wealth mean to you? I feel like this should be like sort of an easy question, but it's not. But I feel like listening to your podcast and then you've sent me some things like from other people who do financial stuff. Like I'm just gaining this whole new perspective on wealth. And I just, I don't know, like I want to set this foundation for my future kids that I don't have yet. But in my mind, I'm just like so amazed by all the resources and things like we were talking about, those things that are out there for people that we just don't know, like we're just ignorant to. And the more I listen to your podcast and I look at the things that you send me, like I'm just learning so much. And I just feel like wealth could be something attainable for everybody if we just knew more. And I think that's that's what it means to me at this point. I, it's just something that I feel like could be in my future and for my family, but I'm still just learning right now. But it's something that I really want for them, for the kids I don't have. All right. Future kids. <laughs> uh, number two, what is your worst money mistake? Um, as much as I love being a psychologist, it's probably going to school. Right. <laughs> I mean, we were in that extended program. I should be a doctor with you. (laughs) (laughs) Loans are crazy. And it's the only like debt I have. So I would say like going to school was probably my worst money mistake. If I could go back, I would maybe, maybe only stay at a master's level. um, Just because there is a lot of things you can do at a master's level. Psychology is, of course, you can do everything and there's no limits. And that's why I went, because I like the idea of not having a cap or a limit. But the debt is real. And I don't know if I would have exactly done it that way if I could do it again. Gotcha. Number three, what is your favorite financial or non-financial book? I don't have a favorite book. Okay. <laughs> right now I'm reading a book called um it's called Chill and Chill and Prosper. I think it's called. It's a continuation of the book Chillpreneur. And I really do like that book. Okay. Um, it's a lot of my friends actually recommended it to me because they feel like 
I operate in the same way. So it's all about being an entrepreneur, but in like the least stressful way. Mm. And I try to operate like that on a daily basis. Got you. Well, I like that because I might have to check that book out too. So shoot me um, a link and uh, might check that out, add that to my library. Yeah, it's pretty good. And for those of you who are looking to get it, <laughs> 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 who are looking to get into business uh one of the books i do like to recommend is the business boutique by Chris. Yeah. um definitely a nice size book but it's filled with activities and um other workshops that you can do inside there um to be successful in business and it's a really super easy read like i enjoyed reading it for somebody who likes to read Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, what is your favorite dish to make? You don't have a lot of favorites of anything. This is why these are hard questions. These are not hard. You, know, <laughs> you make good, um, what is it, what, chicken and broccoli and rice? All my food is good. I make really good chili. Ask my friends. Hey, friend. <laughs> friend. Yes, it is. Okay. You gotta ask your friends. Okay. <laughs> they know. Okay. Uh, the very last question of the show Where could people find out more about you? Well, you can look if you're looking for therapy services. I am accepting new clients right now. So you can go on my website. It's uh, thegreengardenmd.com. So thegreengardenmd as in maryland.com. Um, and there you can find all the information about my services and my rates and, um, I don't know, availability, all that stuff. My contact information's there. I'm on Instagram at the same title the green garden md um i'll be posting on there but i'm not that consistent with that but you can find me there <laughs> and for the new business stuff the course you can check out that website it's called building so this is kind of long but it's building dash a dash therapy dash practice dot teachable dot com so I use the Teachable platform and they host my course and you can go on there and just check it out and you can see all the information that goes with that. You can put it in your notes. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who didn't get that, make sure you rewind this particular episode or just check out the show notes on YouTube and also any other um, podcast platforms you listen to this on. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on the show again, Dr. Green. Yeah. It's always a fun time to have you here um, because one of the things I do enjoy about having these conversations is that you you bring a sense of calmness to the urgency and opening up the mindset that you know everything is doable as long as you focus on it and stay consistent on yourself. So, yeah. Um, what is uh, as a psychologist, what is um, then? And I guess we can. Can you leave us with something special that we all can do today? Um, as our with our psyche, um, say something nice to yourself. I think we're all really mean to ourselves sometimes, and most of you know mental health conditions start with just low self-esteem and everything kind of goes from there and our low self-esteem for whatever reason that we have it whether it's just the thoughts that we have about ourselves or people being mean to us or bullying or body image issues whatever it is um you know that's what creates anxiety and depression and it goes into a lot of other stuff and so i would just suggest to say something nice to yourself well I couldn't end the show any better. So, you guys, uh, be safe. I'm out. Peace. Bye.